Good day, everybody. We Hello. have returned. Hello. We have with theme music. Somebody, oh, we've already got a comment from Greg who says, never heard the opening music before. Groovy. Oh. <laughs> feet, feet were tapping, head was bobbing. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, we were actually performing that live. We were. Yeah, and just as we switched over, we hid the instruments under the table. I am one of the best, you probably don't know this, but I am one of the best mouth trumpet players in the world. <laughs> um, uh, it's been a talent of mine for many years. I, uh, I kind of would, you know, I, I kind of feel like I should demand a, a uh, demonstration of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do that. will be a future tech talk. <laughs> I mean, I don't just play for free. Oh, oh uh, wow. I mean, if the... If, if people want to send donations in yes. to, hear Cor to hear Corey's uh, trumpet, yep. then please uh, do it. Vision forward, <laughs> vision-forward.org. Yes, exactly. Well, welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us again on this uh, lovely Thursday, February 4th. February 4th. Wow, time is flying. Mm. And uh, we're looking forward to some snow today, some more snow. Yeah, the polar vortex the is about to vortex. hit us. It's going to get cold. Yep, so we already have uh, lots of plenty of snow on the ground, but you can never have too much. Am I right? Yeah, we got yeah. like over 10 inches uh, yeah. last uh, over a couple days ago. Yeah, sounds about right. Yes. Which is a nightmare when you're blind. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, I'm totally. here. I got here. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, so yes, welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us. And today we're going to be continuing our two-part series, four strategies for internet access using a screen reader. You got it. Excellent. And uh, actually, the, the title is a, a complete lie because we're actually going to do at least five strategies. Yeah. Well, yeah. you always do. You set, I'm a big fan of setting low expectations. Yeah, okay. And then when you, you know, when you, when you go above and beyond, people yeah. are like, oh my gosh. People's minds are blown. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I've just given the game away now. So nobody's <laughs> mind's going to be blown anymore. But uh, never true. mind. Uh, so last time we looked at. Um, Before. We do that. Let's get the ACVR oh, okay. EP okay, for okay. people. Oh, right, right. So, these are eligible for ACVR EP credits if you are looking to get those. And in order to get to those credits, then you would need the opening code and the closing code. We're about to give you the opening code. So get your notepads or computers or whatever ready. Um, but in order to get those credits, what you're going to want to do yeah. is go to vision-forward.org forward slash tech talk live. Yeah. And f that's our page with all of our uh, kind of links and resources for these uh, Tech Talk Live events, including our new uh, link to the resources uh, where we will actually post kind of documents with um, information about the Tech Talk Live episode. So um, I actually didn't post the second one for this week because I posted this one in uh, the last episodes, which was two weeks ago, if that mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. So that, uh, that document has got all the strategies in. But uh, anyway, in addition to that, you can also to follow a link there to go ahead and um, uh, pay the $10 for mm -hmm. the um, ACVREP credits. And um, do they fill out the questionnaire there? They or? do. Okay, yeah. yeah, fill out the questionnaire as well. Um, and uh, you'll need the, 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 the entrance and the exit codes in order to do that. So I think that code. What is the entrance that... code? You're oh yeah, so, yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> we should probably give you the entrance code. With that, uh, Susan says, please uh, repeat the website. Susan, let me do that, and um, if I can just put it in the chat here. Yeah, just give me I, a do you want? To oh, do you that. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. So uh, it's going to be vision forward dot org forward slash tech talk live. And tech talk, tech is TEC, but you can actually, I think, do it either way now. Carl. You can you have a redirect going you on. You can yep, TEC so. talk live or TECH, whichever one you yep. happen to put in. Whichever you like. So, uh, okay, with all that being said, let's unveil. I feel like we've been building up to this. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's unveil well, our wait, entrance. Wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, unveil the entrance code for today, which is. Polar. Polar. What could, what could the exit code I don't know. Be? Do you want to throw it in chat too for those? Uh, that sure, might, yes. Uh, Let me throw that into chat. Come here. back to it. Uh, so, entrance code yeah. is polar. polar. Perfect. Polar. Okay, excellent. So, uh, there we go. That's in the chat as well. Um, now, uh, in terms of communicating with us on these shows, the chat is always open uh, as, um, as people have been using that already. So, uh, go ahead, feel free to enter whatever you want into the chat and we'll try and answer any questions or anything as we go along. Uh, but also, today we are going to open up the microphones for the first time. <laughs> we are, although yeah. I just realized something. Go on. We didn't. Uh, we, we won't didn't... be able to hear the people yeah, talking. Well, we, I think we will be able to. Well, 
we'll, we'll, potentially. We'll but. give it a try. Um, this this whole uh, thing might seem easy, but the setup is actually uh, is actually uh, somewhat uh, we got a complicated. Full, yeah. 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 So uh, anyway, we're going to open up the mics and we'll see how that goes. If anybody has anything to contribute over uh, the microphone, then uh, please uh, wait until the end, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and open up those mics. If nobody wants to talk, then that's absolutely fine as yeah. well. Just yep. use the chat. Exactly. Yeah. We're just uh, sure. we're just giving it as an option to see if anybody has a burning desire to make themselves heard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's basically well, all the one intro. last thing. Okay. One last thing before the review. Okay. Hit me with your joke. Okay, so that's a, this is a new segment we're starting. <laughs> Tech talk uh, jokes. Well, okay, okay. Um, have I told you the joke about potassium? No. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. If you need, put it in the chat if you need any kind of <laughs> um, explanation. But uh, uh, no, I think people, I think people got that. Hopefully, they know their periodic table. That's very true. All right, there's our joke segment over and done with. I'm sure everybody's very glad that that's finished. I do. We did get feedback about bad jokes, so, so we're going to double down on that. Yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, okay, so uh, let's review what we did in our last session. That was two weeks ago, and that was the first part of our four strategies for internet uh, use with a screen reader. Um, who's do are you recapping that section? I forgot yeah, what we decided. Yeah, okay, think. all right, go for it. So last week, two strategies. First, we started out with arrow keys simply using your up and down arrow keys to move through the entire web page line by line <clears throat> or element by element. We talked about why it's good in the fact that you see everything. It's bad in the fact that you see everything. It's, it's not very efficient. Uh, it would be very difficult to down arrow through an entire complex web page. But again, it does give you a really good uh, idea of how that, the structure of that web page. The second strategy we looked at was starting to navigate by elements. We said elements are the building blocks of web pages. They can be headings, they can be text, they can be form fields, buttons, radio buttons, and JAWS. And most, and all screen readers have built in the ability to navigate a web page by those elements H for heading, B for button, E for edit box, X for checkbox, and so forth. So we showed how to start to begin to use those uh, elements to quickly find what you uh, are looking for. So that's a quick recap of what we did last week. And today now we have uh, strategies three and four and potentially five and whatever else the, we fit the, in. The secret strategy. Yeah. Number five. Uh, and as we did last time, Luke will start out with strategy three and then I'll do strategy four. So I'll pass it back to you to get us rolling. OK, so uh, you guys are going to see the back end again here as we switch our view to our desktop. And uh, if you give me a second, hopefully we can get that underway here. So if I press this one now, hopefully we're going to be looking at, oh yeah, I forgot about that, looking at the desktop. And you guys should be seeing our web page now. So this is the Vision Forward uh, website. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at some uh, ways that we can access this website. Let me go ahead and turn on our speech here. Full speech. OK, there we go. And let me just see where we are on this website. Same page link, skip to visited link, craft. same okay. page link, skip to main. OK, so here we are on a web page. And uh, this is the Vision Forward uh, web page, vision-forward.org. And we're going to talk about our next strategy for navigating web pages, which is going to be the, the virtual find, the JAWS, JAWS find. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular method is, is extremely useful because it allows us to find anything on a page. So it will search the page for us. And we are able to ask JAWS to look for a specific bit of text on that page or specific words on that page uh, that we want to find. So let's do that now. First of all, I'm going to uh, tell you what we're going to look for here. And we are going to look for the Contact Us link on this page. And uh, let's just recap quickly some of the strategies which we had uh, looked at uh, last week or some strategies that we could use. So one thing is we could use our arrow keys. And as we discussed um, in the last session, those are uh, the most inefficient way of finding something. But actually, in, in terms of contact us, that is um, oftentimes at the top of the page. Although saying that, it could be at the bottom of the page as well, thinking yeah. about it. So it mm -hmm. could go either way. But we could try our arrow keys and see if we get to it. So first of all, um, I'm going to do a control home to make sure I'm at the top of the page here. Home page dash and then vision we'll forward. we'll go ahead and use our 
down arrow key and see if we can find contact us. Same page link skip to main content. Visited link graphic vision for visited link donate. Link increase font size. Utility menu navigation region. List of four items. Link about us. Link our impact. Visited link contact us. Okay, so we found it. Wasn't too bad in this case. Mm -hmm. But there's no way that I would have known that that was there if I hadn't been to this page before. Or in my case, um, I, can, I can see it's there. Um, but it might have been that I had to down arrow a million times in order to get there. So uh, here's another strategy that we could have used. Home page down. Let's go back to the top again. Uh, we could have used our uh, tab key because that would have moved us between links on the page or uh, into edit boxes. And so that's another way we could do it. So let's try our tab key. Home page down. Banner region. Donate link. Increase font size. Utility menu navigation region. Our impact link. Contact us link. And again, we were able to find it, but it did take us a number of times to find it. And again, if that contact us link had been uh, somewhere else on the page, it might have taken a lot longer. Control H. History. Okay, that wasn't the, the correct. Home page. There we go. Okay. So here we are. Home so page. we're going to now look at the, the JAWS find instead. And this is another way that we can navigate uh, this page. And we can ask JAWS to find, as I said, specific words on this page. So let's see how this works. We're going to hit Control F. And nothing's going Same to page link, skip to main content. OK, so now we've opened up our JAWS find box. And inside this box, we can type the terms that we want to search for. And so if I'm on a web page and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I want to find the uh, contact us link, we can try typing in the word contact. There we go. And we're going to hit Enter to carry out the search. Contact. Enter. Visited link. Contact us. Aha. And there we found it immediately. So it immediately took us to the Contact Us link. Now, you will note that I didn't type Contact Us. I only typed Contact. And the reason for that is you don't want to be too specific, because if you are not familiar with exactly the wording for the link that you're looking for, then you're going to get yourself into more trouble if you try to be too specific, because it might be worded in a way other than what you think. So if you know, for example, that you want to contact the people, it's best just to look for the word contact, because it might be written as contact us, but it might not be. Right, Corey? You got it. Yeah. Um, so generally, although you want to be specific to a degree, you don't want to be too specific. Yeah, you don't want to be typing the. You don't want to, you don't want <laughs> you to be know. typing, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. But, but the, and, and also remember, with screen readers, the game is to press as little amount of keys as possible. Yeah. So yeah, you don't want to sense. type out contact us. And even, you know, contact is great, but you could even get you know, a little trick. Yeah, it's C-O-N-T yeah. and, yeah. And, yeah. and try to shave off a, a couple letters. Yeah, now you do have to be careful because the less letters you use, the more likely there are to be other exactly. uh, things on that page that use those same letters Constant, in that same order. Con, you exactly, know, you yeah. can start to get other words you didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you do have to be somewhat careful. So yeah, the trick is, like, like you say, Corey, using the least amount of letters possible to achieve the result that you yeah. want. And uh, some of that takes just experience, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. And one other side note, we are, just, we are showing it in JAWS specifically today with Control F, but NVDA also has a similar feature. The keyboard command for NVDA search is uh, insert or caps lock, depending on which key you're using as your modifier. Uh, but it would be the NVDA key plus control plus F. Excellent. Uh, so just adding that NVDA key, which would either be insert or caps lock, adding that to it uh, is going to get you the same results. Cool. All right. So once we found our link, uh, we found the contact us link. Let's go ahead and go to that link, and we'll just open Enter. up that uh, particular web page. Our impact. Link our impact. Nine regions, two headings, and 76 links. Article. All right. So we're on the Contact Us page now. And um, uh, I'm just going to do the uh, the JAWS find again, but um, just this time actually looking at it to find an, some text instead of a link specifically. Um, because it can be super useful for, you know, for finding all sorts of things. But with links, we have some other strategies we can use for finding links. Uh, but with uh, text, we might not have those same strategies. So on this page, for example, um, let's just see what we've got here. Contact us heading level we one. We have a heading which is called contact us. Driving directions heading level two. And we have a heading which is called driving directions. And underneath the driving directions heading. From the Nominee Falls column US-45 S. OK, we have different uh, driving directions from different places. Onto it from Franklin column I-94 W. Franklin. On your right from downtown now, Milwaukee column I-94. Greg, who was from the first to chat this morning, yeah. is from Waukesha. Oh, good. Okay. So let's say Greg came to this page and wanted. OK. so. Um, let's, so the way that I just found that was by using my headings and then using my arrow keys um, to get there. But I could have used my JAWS find. So let's go up to the top of the page here. Contact. 
And so this time we're going to use our, our JAWS find. And now um, we know that we're looking for something to do with Walkershaw. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that makes a logical a word for us to look for. So JAWS find dialog. Find what colon edit combo. Contact. Do you know how to spell it? Well, that's going to be the trick here. <laughs> I think I have it. Let's try it. <laughs> so I've typed in what I think is Walkershaw here. <laughs> We're going to press uh, Enter, and we'll see if we find it. Waukesha, Enter. From Waukesha, colon, I-94, E toward Milwaukee, semicolon, take the whole. Excellent. There and there, I did find it. So um, that was a really nice uh, tool that I have. Um, some of the, some of the, uh, you know, some of the other tools that we have, um, we also have some other tools available for finding various things for, for example, for links and for headings um, that might uh, also be quite efficient, but maybe a little less efficient, depending on how how certain we are that the thing that we're looking for is going to be on the page. It's, it's a little bit confusing, but let's say that we go to a website and we do want to contact them. Um, it's very likely that a website is going to have a link to contact them um, because, you know, businesses generally want you to be able to contact them. <laughs> um, so using the JAWS uh, find is, uh, you know, going to be really useful in uh, uh, that situation. Uh, but um, we might not necessarily know exactly what we're looking for. And in that scenario, there are some other uh, useful tools which we can use. So. For example, um, if we do an insert F7, and I have to press the function key as well here. So Links list dialog. Links list view. Twitter. This 1676. To move to items, of, use the arrow keys. A list of links uh, on this page. And we can navigate those using the arrow keys up and down. View location in Google Maps. Info at vision-forward.org. Or even more usefully, we can press the first letter of a link if uh, we think we have an idea of what it might be called. Children's learning, clocks and watches, community education. And each time we press that letter, it's going to move us to the next instance of a link that starts with that letter. Mm -hmm. um, so this is also a really useful tool. Um, I've gone off, uh, off the script a little bit because uh, uh, I was just going to be talking about uh, JAWS uh, Find. But I mean, this is in a, in a similar kind of way that JAWS Find allows yep. you to kind of zero in on something. Um, you know, this links list is also very uh, useful in that regard as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just another tool that you can use to help you uh, pass information, which is pretty much what screen reader use is all about. It's trying to, trying to uh, kind of sort through the information as, as quickly and as easily as possible to find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, the same kind of feature for um, a list of headings as well. So if we do insert function and F. There is an open JAWS dialog. Only one JAWS dialog box. And now we've opened up a box with all of the headings on this page. We only have two headings here. Driving directions, colon two. Driving directions. Contact us, colon one. one. So, so um, that, that's another useful tool. I would say probably the links one is maybe the more useful. Um, uh, if you've, or the, might be the more commonly used, you know? Yeah, I think, I think yes, in the fact that there's typically more, um, there's more links typically than there are headings. So yes, hitting your yeah. H key a yeah. couple times isn't a big deal. Yeah. Where the headings list can be helpful though, is Escape. some web pages potentially can have 20 headings on it. And if you know your heading starts with a certain letter, yeah, it's true. faster to do that insert F6 and then hit the letter of the heading you're looking for. And then once both on the links list and the headings list, then when you hit enter on it within that option, then it takes you to that heading or to that link uh, on that page. Yeah, exactly. Activates that link for you and yeah. off you go. So um, th that's some, some really useful tools there, the, the JAWS find, the links list, um, the headings list. Now, Corey, I uh, believe that you yourself are not a big links list user, but you are a big JAWS find user. Yes, I okay. use JAWS find. Uh, that's almost... That's probably this, besides using headings, that's probably my, my second most go-to uh, thing that I'm doing. <clears throat> I find it to be, uh, for me, I find it to be the easiest. You know, if I'm going to, let's say I'm going on a page and I'm reading an article about, you know, I hit enter on the name of an article. Let's say it says, um, you know, new, new Braille displays by Humanware. Uh -huh. And I click, I hit enter on that, it brings up the article. I could do H and try to find it, but I could also do a control find or control F and, and type in, you know, humanware or braille display and, and get right down to that chunk of the page where it's going to have that. So I find for me that virtual find is, is the tool I reach to, but I've worked with a lot of people who like the links list and the headings list. I think a lot of it comes down to like anything on the computer. <clears throat> There's always at least 
four ways to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's coming down to whichever you remember and whichever clicks with you and makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think with the with the JAWS find, um, you've got a, it, it's a bit of a weird one because there might be multiple things that you have to search for before you find the thing that you want. Mm -hmm. So depending on how good you are with your search terms, that's going to affect yeah, how useful yeah. it is. Like, for example, um, if you go to a shopping website and you want to get to the cart, but it, it might be called the cart, but it might be called the shopping basket, yeah. or it might just be called the basket, yeah. or well, the pocket, or the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the bag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It could be the bag, isn't it? Yeah. Um, satchel. Yeah, the, uh, set. there you go. The case. <laughs> to, I'm running out of uh, I, need a, I need a thesaurus to come up with a pouch pouch the pouch there the pouch, shopping pouch yep. uh, so there might be a few different terms that you have to find now the nice thing is once you uh, if it's a website that you start to use often then you're probably going to remember specifically how they how they word that stuff yeah uh, which then makes it quicker to find. So, and the other thing with virtual find that we didn't mention is that you know let's say for example. Uh, in our first example, when Luke did a search for contact and he did land on contact us, let's say for some reason though, that wasn't the one he was looking for to continue searching down the page. Cause remember what it's gonna do is it's gonna take you to the first instance of that term from where you are on the page. So in, in Luke's example, he was at the top of the page. So when he typed contact, it took us to the first instance of the word contact. But let's say that wasn't the one he was looking for. Let's say farther down the page is another instance of the word contact. Rather than hitting control F and typing contact again, hitting F3 will continue searching down the page for that, uh, for that same search term. Excellent. And then shift F3 will, will go back re in reverse. Back and does up that the wrap page. around to the top when it gets yep. to the end? Or? Okay. Sure does, perfect. yeah. Perfect. Yep. Excellent. All right. So there's, uh, there's our strategy number three. Yep. Three, I feel like it was like a 3A and a 3B. It was. It yeah. was like three and then, yeah, 3.1. Yeah, 3 <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now I'm going to pass over to Corey cool. and we're going to look at the next strategy. So any any question, any chat questions on that one? Uh, we just have we... Greg says, thank you uh, because now he knows how to drive here. Oh, so. perfect. <laughs> perfect. Well, getting here is half the battle, Greg. Uh, being able to see and actually drive is a whole second. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a later tech talk. <laughs> So, all right. Virtual PC. All right, let's move on now to strategy number four, which is place markers. Now, place markers is specific to JAWS. Um, I do believe, uh, and please, if anyone knows, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe NVDA by default does not have the ability for place markers. I think there are some add-ons that you can install to NVDA to extend its functionality. And I think one of them is place markers. Uh, but for now, JAWS is sort of, they, they hold the uh, uh, trademark and the, the patent on, on, on place markers. So it's, this one's a little more JAWS specific. What place markers are, are, you may be familiar with bookmarks or favorites in your browser. If there's a website you go to all the time, for example, let's say this, you know, Vision Forward, you can set a bookmark or a favorite so that you can more quickly get back to this page without having to retype out the entire URL. A place marker is basically the same, although it lets you set a bookmark or a place mark on a specific page, uh, uh, on a specific point of the page. So let's use um, contact us dash vision. We're going to use Luke's example here in, in two different ways. First, we're going to look at setting a temporary place marker. And second of all, we'll look at setting a permanent place marker. And that's going to be when you come to a site often. So first, let's look at if we came to a web page and let's say we're going to use this example here of the driving directions for Waukesha. Let's say you were kind of bouncing between uh, two different sets of directions here, Menominee Falls and uh, Waukesha. What you might want to do is set temporary place markers so you can more quickly get to each of those. So first, let's uh, move to the directions for Menominee Falls. So I'm going to use uh, Luke's strategy three here, virtual find. Just find dialog. And I'm find what colon falls. Falls. Enter from Menominee Falls colon US dash 45 S. And we landed right here on the Menominee Falls directions. Now I'm going to set a temporary place marker here 
because I'm going to want to come back to this. So to do that, it's Control Windows K. Alt Control K. Oops, how about I not do it? <laughs> Wrong. Let's try this again. Temporary place marker set for Menominee Falls. Call so I've US now set a temporary place marker for the Menominee Falls. Now I want to move to the Waukesha direction. So I'm going to just do find find dialogue. again, although I could just do walk, enter from Menominee Falls, column US-40 onto N Hall, from Menominee Falls Oops. onto N Holly Road, Road semicolon, just find dialogue. Walk, find enter from us. Franklin, column I-90, onto N, from Franklin, column I-94, oh, W slash US-41 N toward a stoplight at the end on your right, from downtown Milwaukee, <laughs> column I-90, just find dialogue. Then we're just going to... Walk, enter, from downtown Milwaukee, colon, I I dash 94W, slash, US, dash, 41, and toward US, oh, dash, 41, oh. slash, Madison, yeah, semicolon, right. take the Hollywood oh, exit. That is a perfect exit example <laughs> of why I was trying to be, um, I was trying to be... You were trying to save time, but you ended time, up wasting time. Just confusing myself. Just find dialogue. W-A-U-K-E-S, let's try walk that. Walk dash, enter, hey. from Waukesha, colon, I dash, nine. Perfect example of trying to type the least amount of characters possible, but then getting yourself in a, in a, in a bit of a pickle. I was typing W A U K E, I think, yes, right? Yeah, 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 Thinking yeah. that was Waukesha, although that has that 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 chunk of letters is in that exact order for Milwaukee. So, <laughs> all right, let's set one more place temporary place marker here. Control Windows K. Temporary place marker set. From all right, Waukesha, so we've got two temporary toward Milwaukee. place markers set for this web page. What this is now going to allow us to do is to quickly jump between these two points of this web page and there's a couple ways that we can access place markers but first the easiest way i'm going to show you right now is just by pressing the letter k so let's go back up to the top of the page for a moment contact us dash and if i hit the letter k it's going to take us to the first place marker set on this page which we know is going to be the menominee falls now it's not the first place marker you created it's the first marker it lands in from where the cursor is. So in this case, I set the Menominee Falls uh, place marker first, and so it's going to get to that first. Uh, but if I would have done the Waukesha first and then went up the page to Menominee Falls and created that as the second one, when I come to the top of the page and do my K, it's going to come to the Menominee Falls one because that's the first one it encounters. So I'm going to hit K. From Waukesha, colon, I dash 94 <laughs> toward Milwaukee, semicolon, take the road exit. Wow, it's it is all goofy today. Oh, you know what? Holy road, I know what drive point eight miles. I'm a, I'm a dumb dumb. You can only set one temporary at a time. Oh, well, that was, that so was so when I, one. yeah, that was a oh. bad example on my part. <laughs> when you created, when I created the second temporary, replaced it. So my, my, my fault there. You can only create one temporary place marker at a time. So I originally created it for Nemanja Falls, but then when I created it for Waukesha, it replaced it. But as you saw, what happened is even from the top of the page, when I hit K, it took me to that temporary place marker, which was set at the Waukesha. So it jumped uh, and skipped everything on that page and landed right exactly where we needed it. Now, you said that this is a temporary place marker. Yes. So let me ask you two questions. Okay. Number one, if we navigate away from this page but remain on this website and come back to this page later, mm -hmm. will it still be there? So you mean not close the browser, but just go to a different page? Yes. Okay, let's find out. All right. Let's do it. Let's contact. go to your contact link. Just find dialogue. Oh, that's where we are now. That's where we are now. Yeah, let's go to the... C-A-T-N-O-C-Line. Yeah. That's always a, a Done. classic. Done. Enter. Screen find result. Is same. Visited link graphic. Visited link. Link increase fonts. Utility mail. List of four. A link about us. Link our impact. Visited current page. Link contact us. Oh, link shopping cart. Colon Z. List end. Oh, link visited. Link our impact. All right. We'll Enter. Done. Banner right, region. So Utility right, so menu navigation we've region. Away list. From that with four items. Page. Now let's Success go back to that vision for contact page. Just find dialogue. Cont. Enter. Same page link. Skip to main content. Visited link graphic oh, vision forward yeah. associate visited link donate link increase font utility list of link about us visited link our impact visited link contact us oh, enter right. banner region utility menu navigation re now we'll Con we'll try our k again and see if it's still there and i'll hit my k from waukesha colon i dash 94 okay. toward milwaukee semi so we'll remember it as long as you stay here but as soon as we leave this page or close the browser window we're going to lose that temporary uh place mark all right what was your second question uh, well, the second question was going to... Uh, you've, you've already answered it. The second question was if we close the browser okay. and then open it back up again. Got it. But at that point, it's gone. Uh, the place marker is no longer there. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's look at creating permanent ones. Okay. Let's say this was temporary, but let's say we come to this page often. 
And we always want to quickly be able to get to the Menominee Falls directions and also the Franklin. Let's say you're working the front desk here at, at Vision Forward and you're constantly getting phone calls. How do you get to Vision Forward from Menominee Falls? How do you get to Vision Forward from Franklin? What we'll want to do is create permanent place markers because you'll be coming to this page and wanting to get to that specific location often. So first, let's go up to the, let's go find the Menominee Falls. Just find dialogue. Falls, enter, wrapping to top from Menominee Falls, call in US. So now we're going to set a permanent place marker. And the way we do that is a control shift K. And that's going to bring up the place markers dialog box. Place marker list dialog, place marker list view, not selected temporary document, one of one to move to. And we hear in this list view, the temporary place marker is still sitting there in that list because that's the one we created from before. We're going to use our tab key and find the add button. Add dot 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 button. Here we go. Space, place marker list dialog, add place marker dialog, name colon edit, falls colon US 45S towards Milwaukee semicolon merge onto I 90. The first uh, inside this add dialog, the first box is the name of the place marker. Now, by default, it's going to pop in the text that you were sitting on where you were creating the place marker. You can leave that in or you can simply backspace T blank 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 and just put anything you want in. So we'll put falls. Falls. Define for all pages on current domain checkbox not checked. Then I tab to a new box here that says define on all pages of domain. By default, it's unchecked, which means it's only going to create the place marker for this specific page within the website. If I would check this box, it would create the place marker across the domain. Now, where you might find this to be important is not in this example, but if you were setting a place marker, for example, in the main navigation, where you know that that main navigation is on every single page of that domain or of that entire website, you would want to check this box because then your place marker will work on no matter uh, will work no matter which page of the site you're, you're on. So going back to our contact us link, yes, that's the type of link that might be across an entire website. Yep, so it exactly. could be useful for that type of thing. You got it, yep. exactly. I'm going to uh, leave it unchecked for now because I know this place marker is specific to the page I'm on, so I'm going to tab. Anchor to text checkbox not checked. Anchor to text. Now, this box I find to be important, and I do think you want to check this. Space, checked. As soon as we check it and we hit tab again, Anchor text colon edit, false colon US 45S. We now get some text here that, and it's basically the text again we were sitting on. What this anchor to text means is you want to check this so that your place marker is anchored to this specific text. And that's important, especially if the web page uh, updates often. Every time a web page updates and text is added or removed, this text here that we're choosing to set a place marker and can, can drift a little bit. It can be a little higher up the page, a little lower down the page. <clears throat> and so by checking this anchor to text checkbox, we're saying, hey, I don't care where this, this text drifts to. I want you to keep this place marker tied to this specific text. So it's a good way to keep, make sure you keep your place marker where you want it to be. And so I recommend leaving this text alone in this edit box. Don't change it. We'll tab. OK button and to we'll activate press space bar by All hitting space space. All right. On to end Holy Road. Center. We have now created this place marker. Let's go back up to the top of the page. Contact us. And again, we have two different ways that we can access this permanent place marker. We learned before that we could simply hit the K key. So if I hit K. From Menominee Falls, colon US dash. You see it lands exactly on my Menominee Falls permanent one I just hit. If I hit K again, it's going to land on that temporary one. From Waukesha, colon I dash 94. There's that temporary one we did. If I hit K a second time, it would scroll down to the bottom of the page, see that there's no more place markers, and come back again to the Menominee Falls one because that's the first uh, place marker it sees. So I find K to be very fast, especially if you don't have a lot of place markers. But let's say you have multiple Contra place markers, five, six, ten different place markers set on this page. Hitting K, 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 K to try to get to place marker nine could take a long time. So the second way that you can ask, access place markers is the same keyboard command we use to create a place marker. Control Shift K. Place marker list dialog. Place marker list view. Not selected false document. One of two. two. And now we see that we're in the list of all the place markers on this specific page. I could either use my down arrow or my first letter navigation. Selected. 
and I'm on the falls, I'll hit enter. F, enter. Heading level two from the Nominee Falls colon US. And it took me right to that place marker. So again, two different ways to access to move to those place markers, hitting K or hitting control shift K and then moving uh, and choosing it in the list. Some pro level tips there. Yeah. yeah. Now, second one, like I mentioned before, temporary place markers, you can only do one, but we can set more than one place marker here. So let's try the Franklin one just, real quick, just to show it again. Frank, enter from Franklin colon. So now we're on from Franklin. So we'll do control shift K. Place marker list dialog. Place marker list view. Not selected false document. There's our list, but we want to tab to the add button. Add dot 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 space. Place marker list dialog. Add place marker dialog. Name colon edit. Franklin colon I dash 94 W. And I'm going to get rid of e, all blah, that blah, text blah, blah, too blah, much. Blah. And I just want Franklin in there instead. Franklin. Define for all pages on current domain. Tab and leave that defined for all uh, unchecked because this is specific to this page. Tab to anchor text. Anchor to text check box not check. Space bar to check it. Space. Checked. Tab to OK. Uh, anchor text colon edit. Franklin colon. There's that actual text, the anchor text. We want to leave that alone and we'll tab to OK. Hello. We lost. OK button. Oh, there to we activate go. press okay. space bar. Enter. <laughs> there we go. A stop light at the end of the exit maps. From now we've got three place markers, two permanent and one temporary. So Contact. again, we go up to the top of the page. First K is going to take us to Menominee Falls. From Menominee Falls colon. Second K will take us to Franklin. From Franklin colon I dash 94 W slash US dash temporary. From Waukesha colon I dash 94 Now what's great about that, like I mentioned the example of maybe working at a reception desk or whatever, we had to access this often. Now with those permanent ones, you just bring up this page, hit K and you'll jump right to the exact point you want. I feel that could be extremely useful for people who work with web-based applications yes. for their job. Yeah. Um, to quickly get them to different areas that they need to use. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, link and, and you can set a, a place marker on anything, on a heading, on a link, mm -hmm. on a piece of text, on a form field, it doesn't matter. Place markers can, can be set on web pages, they can be set within PDF documents, and place markers can also be used in Word documents. The only thing to remember though with Word documents is that you can only set one place marker at a time only one place marker in a Word document where PDFs and HTML, it's pretty much unlimited. So that would basically act as a bookmark then yeah. in a Word document? Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So that is that is place markers. And, mm -hmm. and within that dialog box, you'll also notice, and I'll just quickly show, if we do a control shift K, Place marker list dialog. Let's say, Place for example, we want to get rid of that temporary one, or let's say we want to get rid of the Franklin one. I'm just going to down arrow. Franklin document. All right, I chose Franklin. I'm going to tab now. Add dot 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 button. There's to our add button as usual, but let's keep tabbing. Move to button to activate I can press move space. Move to it, so that means rather than hitting enter, I don't know why you would. I mean, if you hit enter on move to, it's going to move to the place marker you're sitting on. You might as well just hit enter on the place <laughs> marker. But tab again. Change dot 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 button. I can to change activate that space, space marker if I want to. Remove button. Or tab here to remove. There's also remove all button. a remove all if I wanted to get rid of all place markers within this um, web page. So within that control shift escape, K, escape. within that place markers dialog box, you'll have the ability to change, edit, delete, remove anything you need to do with those place markers. So place markers can be set to act as navigational aids. Mm -hmm. But I happen to know that your fifth and secret technique oh, yeah. is also a, a different way of not placing navigational aids kind of physically, yeah. but placing them mentally. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do now is let's take most of the concepts we just learned, the four, four except the place markers, <laughs> we'll use the three, <laughs> and we're going to put them into action together. And what I want to show you is Let's say I am interested in uh, learning about, uh, I want to find out how much some Bose Q35 e, uh, headphones cost on Amazon. And I want to find out how much they cost, and then I want to find, I want to read the reviews. So I want to walk you through how I do it. And, and, and the reason, the, the reason I've, I'm doing this is because I go to Amazon a lot. Side note, did you know there's a, you can go on an Amazon page and see how much you've spent on Amazon in your I lifetime? I do not want to do that. I did it once yeah. and it made me very sad. <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I, I buy a lot from Amazon. And what's great about Amazon is that even though every 
every uh, product page is a different product, the structure of those product pages are, are, are almost identical. Yes. So once you sort of learn that, it's super easy to find the information you want. But I want to show you how I use the three strategies um, plus this fifth strategy to quickly find what I'm looking for. So I was going to say, uh, people uh, put in the chat what they want Corey to buy, and he'll buy it. On <laughs> yeah, <Amazon>. exactly. That's <laughs> very true. And, uh, and have it shift to, to you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The more put expensive, your, uh, the better. Put your address and credit card in the <laughs> chat, and we'll make sure you get it. So, all right. First and foremost, we're, we're going to do this a little differently. One of the things I like about Chrome is that when you jump up to the address bar in Chrome, you can do a Google search. So you don't actually have to go to Google.com to perform a search. You can simply type your search um, your uh, search terms right in the address bar and it will perform a Google search for you. So we're going to do an Alt D to get to the address bar. Oh, I think our keyboard's starting to die. Uh -oh. Alt D, Alt D. There we go. I have to get closer. Did it get up to the address Yeah, yeah, there. Okay, good. All right, we're going to type BBC. Bose. 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 I, I, U, Q. Q. One. 35, I think they are. Q35. Amazon. Amazon. Enter. Enter. Google.com slash search Q search. equals Bose plus Q35 II plus Amazon and RLZ equals Bose. Closer to the computer. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to the top of the page. That's our one of the things we learn. Bose Q35 II. How do we do that again, Corey? Control home. Excellent. Now we know that uh, search results are headings. Uh, so we are going to use our H key to find the uh, search result I'm looking for. The way I do it is I'm, I'm listening for the word uh, web results because then I know my next search result's going to be right after that. I tend to skip over a lot of the sponsor ads and the products that list on top, even though they are uh, probably ap uh, applicable to what I want. I just got in the habit of skipping them. So I'm going to hit H a bunch of times. Accessibility search modes, ads, title, of, 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 title, 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 those are products, and I know that, so I'm just skipping over them. Title, of, title, of, title, of, search results, web results, heading level. That's that ah. word I was looking for. Next one. Bose Quiet Comfort 35 II Wireless Bluetooth dot 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 dash Amazon dot. That's what I want. Enter. Enter to go to that page. HTTPS colon slash slash. We're bringing up the Amazon page now. Control home to go to the top. Amazon.com colon. Now first I want to find out how much it is. I know that Amazon that's a few Bose arrow Comfort keys Amazon. down Amazon. from a heading that is the title of the product we want. So I'll hit H. Customers who viewed Bose Quiet Comfort. H again. Buy new colon dollar 290. Well, that was telling us there, but H, yeah, H again, though. <laughs> Add a protection plan. Save with your use dash other sellers on Amazon. Oh, head this is weird. Let me try again. What Amazon. Dot customers who viewed Bose Quiet Comfort 35 II wireless that. Bluetooth headphones. Yeah, noise dash canceling. No, it didn't. I wonder if these aren't for sale. Yeah, let's try again. Buy new colon dollar. Add a protection plan. Save with your use other sellers on Bose Quiet Comfort 35 II wireless Bluetooth yeah. headphones. Noise dash canceling. So we had a bunch of little headings above, and now I'm going to down arrow a couple times, and I should find the price. Link visit the Bose store. Link 4.7. Same page. Link 42,000. Link 1,000 plus. Answer Amazon's choice of link Bose headphone separator. Price colon dollar 299.00 and free go. shipping. Bargain. 299. Yeah. All right. Now, the next thing I said I wanted to do. So there was an example of using headings and the arrow keys. So that was strategy one and strategy two to find what I was looking for. Now, you could use virtual find in this instance as well, too, if you wanted to. Let's say, for example, I wanted to um, check out my cart here on Amazon. So I'd go to the top Amazon and I would do a virtual find, Just find dialog. and I would type cart. Cart, enter, link zero items in cart. And I land on the link here that says zero items in cart. So I know that obviously I have zero, and if I would hit enter on this, it would open up my cart. We could try searching for like price or something like that. Dollar but, sign maybe, but well, then, I feel like there's going to be a lot of those sure. around. But like the word price maybe. Amazon, or, you could try. There that. might be a lot of those as well. Not knows, knowing because so. because yeah. Amazon does such a good job of showing you all of these other products. That's the dangerous that's part. That's why I tend yeah. to use the H key until I land on the heading of the actual product, because then I know down arrowing will find it. Yeah. Now let's talk about fifth strategy for a moment. Now the, the, the last thing I talked about was wanting to check out the reviews on this uh, page. Now, I, I'm, I, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it actually works correctly because <laughs> I didn't test it ahead of time, but let's all roll together on this. But typically I could use my H key to move until I hear something that says like, customer reviews. But when you do that, let's actually try it because we'll, we'll, we'll see what we get here. 
So we're going to do first, you know what, instead of doing Amazon. virtual find, uh, instead of doing headings, which I know we could get to with probably 10 or 15 of it. Let's try review instead. We'll do control F. Just find dialogue. We'll just find. type the word review. But let's see. I bet you I know what, where we're going to land. Though. Review. Enter. Link B07Q4QK379 slash ref equals DP underline <laughs> underline <laughs> yeah, yeah, underline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and, and also you would get uh, underneath the main heading of the product page, it also said 172 reviews. reviews yeah. you know, so let's use our H key again and let's go find the reviews here. Buy this product is renewed. Frequently bought together heading with products related to this. I more items to explore. Head important information. Head visible screen diagonal. Have a question heading from the manufacturer. QC35. Renown noise canceling. QC35. C one app complete control. Alexa. Anywhere. Compare Bose head. Compare with similar product description. Got a bunch. Product here. information heading. Warranty and support feedback heading. Product guides and doc videos heading. Videos for this product. Customer questions and answers heading level two. Getting close. <laughs> Products related to this item sponsored. Ha customer reviews heading level two. There we go. Customer reviews. So that must be right, huh? Yeah. So if we start the down arrow. 4.7 out of 5 stars. Okay. 4.7 out of 5. 42,781 global ratings. Link 5 star. Lots of ratings. Link 5 stars represent 85% so of ratings. We're still getting a bunch of information though. I don't want to see how many, I mean, I see how many stars, but I'm more interested in knowing what the name, you know, actual written reviews. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep going down because I want to show you something we're going to listen for. Link 85%. Link 4 star. Link 4 stars. Link 8%. Link 3 star. Link 3 star. Link 3%. Link 2 star. Link 2 stars. Link 1. Link 1. Link 1. Link 2. Link hour by feature. Battery life. 4 points. 4 points. Quality. 4 points. 4 points. Sound. 4 points. 4 points. Links. Heading. Share your thought. Write a customer read. Heading level 3. Customer image. Customer image. Crap. Customer image. Customer image. Customer image. Same page. Link. Heading level 3. Read. Link sound quality. Link noise canceling. Okay, at this point, it's too much. I have too many, too many down arrows. I still haven't gotten to actual reviews. Now, I'm going to save you the, uh, the 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 pain that I have gone through. <laughs> and I want to teach you a, a little bit of a strategy. Now, I've gone through the whole down arrow to finally find my reviews in the past. And what I had learned as I went down there is that right above where the reviews are actually listed where the actual text is, where you can read what people are saying. There is a combo box that I believe says top reviews. It allows you to sort how the reviews are, are, are displayed. And I don't need to change the way that the, the reviews are displayed, but I am gonna use that combo box as a landmark. I know that I can hit my C key to quickly move to through combo boxes. So I'm gonna use my C key Combo box, top reviews. Land right on it, now down arrow. Heading level three, top reviews from the United States. Link James B. Link 5.0 out of five stars. And I've immediately gotten to. Link I give it five stars. My what reviewed in the United States. His actual, this James, that's the first review here. Now let's go back to the top of the page and show how we could do it from there. Top of the page. Amazon. Now again, let's say I want to know the reviews. I'm going to hit C. Search in combo box. Well, Electronics. that's not it. C again. QTY colon combo box. That's what? the quantity combo box. Another trick if you wanted to change the quantity of what you're buying. See again. Combo box, top reviews. Right there. So three key presses got me to the same point that 58 presses never even got us to. We gave up <laughs> because we got too tired of it. The point of this example though is we don't need this combo box. We're not, we don't need it. We're not interacting with it but instead we are using it as a stepping stone or as a landmark for us to quickly jump to because we know we can use our C key and then begin down arrowing from that point to quickly get to where we're going. So, the, so what, what's, if there are pages you go to a lot, it's super important to be aware of what's above or below where you are and can you use that? Is it a, is it a link? Is it a button? Is it a heading? Is it a checkbox? And can I use that to navigate to it and then move away from it to more quickly get to where I'm going? Does and that make sense? This all, this all ties back into what we were talking about last time in terms of like creating the mental map. Yes. And just kind of part of that mental map is going to be these, these features which can act as landmarks, not as landmarks in the sense of the ones that we were placing uh, with our key commands, but yeah. just as elements on a web page which uh, have some specificity about them that can allow us to get around that web page more quickly. Because I mean, there's a number of different ways that you could potentially, you know, get to those reviews. Mm -hmm. Like you could open up your headings list, and I think you like the heading there was like top reviews. Yeah. You know, look for that in there. 
Um, but I mean, it's really just finding the quickest way to do it and also the way that works the best for you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's, you know, everything we're showing in the last two weeks. We're not saying that this is this is the word, like you should do exactly what we're saying. Where we're showing you a number of ways to increase your, your productivity and your efficiency, but really what it comes down to is whichever way makes sense to you and the one you remember is the best one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's that's been helpful. I mean, the internet is a weird and wonderful place, and I think yeah. uh, a lot of the time it can be trial and error. You know, when you're first getting used to a new web page in particular, um, but uh, there's a number of strategies that screen readers have that can help you to more efficiently find yeah. what you're looking for. And the more of those strategies that you know, then the better Space. off you're going to be Speech in terms of being able to to navigate um, through. Uh, through web pages. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the best thing is just to try a bunch of this stuff out uh, with unfamiliar web pages and see uh, what kind of trouble you can get yourself into. Yeah, yeah, you can always alt F4 out of whatever you're doing and yeah. get out of it. <laughs> um, we're going to give you guys the ch I, I muted the speech, uh, Luke. If you okay. want to go in and in, in, into Zoom and uh, allow people to unmute themselves. I'm trying, but my mouse is unfortunate. I, I think our, I can do it with it. <laughs> I, think, uh, we have, I think our wireless needs to be charged. Okay, hold on. You we're, guys are going to hear a little bit of Jaws again, and you'll <laughs> hear me full speech do it real quick i was i was uh i was hoping that we could switch obs back to our other scene but, yeah uh, oh let me oh wait i've got it I, i've got it. menu okay, input chat text sec. type message here space speech on demand there you go okay so let me just yeah, we'll switch back, back to our, our, our beautiful faces here hello all right and uh, let's go ahead and unmute while them. while luke is giving you guys the ability please put some more questions in the chat if you'd like uh, we're going to give you the ability in just a moment to unmute yourself and talk if you'd like to um one thing we'll make sure uh is we're gonna have, we may have to check the audio settings in zoom uh hopefully it'll come through the headphones let's we'll see give what it a happens whirl. um actually while i'm talking <laughs> do you want to check and make sure uh that the uh, if you go to the audio settings there in Zoom, Give me one second here. we'll make sure that the speakers. Okay. We're going to give everybody the chance here in a moment to unmute themselves. To do that, uh, if you're sighted, you can click the uh, uh, unmute. If you are visually impaired, you should be able to do Alt A to unmute yourself. Speakers in Zoom are set to USB audio device. Uh, can you look down in the bottom right, down in the system tray? What's the what's the card that's uh, on that one right now? Uh, Realtek. Let's change it to Realtek. Then. Okay. And let's see if that works. We're gonna give it a whirl. Who? Anybody want to be first? Well, let's hold on. We'll, we'll change it. All right. So you possibly might be able to chat now if you want to, but we're not 100% yeah. sure. So. If anybody wants to give a shot, uh, wants to hop on and talk, feel free. If you want to raise your hand with an Alt Y, you may. And we can unmute you, or if you want to unmute yourself with an Alt-A, you should be able to talk as well. I feel like this is going to be one of those things where nobody's going to yeah, want to Yeah, probably talk. not. That's all right. I, don't, I wouldn't want to, but... Uh, in the meantime, we do have a question in the chat okay. from Benita. She says, this is so useful. I am a JAWS user. I don't know if I will remember all of this. How can I get a copy that I can refer to? So, yeah, Benita, so two options here. Option number one, if you feel capable and, win and willing, you can go to vision-forward.org forward slash tech talk live. And uh, that will take you through to our page with everything uh, related to these events. And there's a link on that page uh, which will take you through, I think the link is called resources or something like that. Yeah. That will take you through to another page where we have links which uh, will allow you to download um, uh, lesson notes, so to speak. So that's one way. Now, the other way, of course, is to uh, get in touch with us via email. Yeah. And so you could email us at, I'm going to type it in the, in the chat here, infocus at vision-forward.org. Oh, I did it all in uh, uppercase. Oh, he's screaming. Uh, I know. Listen. Everybody email us. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, you can also send us an email, and we'd be happy to um, to, to email you back with the, these lesson notes. And you'll notice on those notes, there's more than we covered today, too. It's yes, sort yeah. of our full handout uh, that we give for, for web browsing. Yeah, but if you prefer just uh, just a list of the, the keyboard shortcuts and what they do, then you know we, we'd be happy to type yeah. that out for you as well. Yeah, so. for sure. 
Um, Dave, uh, it's Dave, Dave again. Oh, hey, Dave, Dave. Uh, Dave, Dave um, says, uh, how well do the place markers work in the Google suite? Any ideas, Corey? Uh, fine. I mean, again, I, I, I don't do a heck of a lot in, in Docs and, and Drive and such, but uh, what I have done and, and have used place markers for, it's, it's been fine. It's been fine. Excellent. And um, a long time listener and fan, dare I say, Jason Everett. Says, oh, yes. Always great stuff. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. And uh, German Benitez, who I don't believe we've heard from before, also says great job. So oh, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. We appreciate that. Let me just check, see if anybody's got their hands up just in case, but I don't think they do. It's OK. Let me. Uh, it is OK, but it also makes me slightly sad. Oh, wait, we've got two people. OK, we have a Douglas. OK. Uh, Douglas, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to allow you to talk here. You should be, yeah, let's and see then we we'll see hear. whether we can hear you. <laughs> yeah. OK, so here we go. OK, Douglas, you are on the air, hopefully. And you're, but your microphone is still muted at the moment, Might, by the looks of it. You probably need to do an Alt-A if you're on Windows. I think we're getting there. I wonder if I can do anything. You can't unmute. You can give him the ability to unmute, but because of privacy, they still, you can't make his mic active. OK. Uh, well, OK, so let's, we also have a Greg here who well, also has his Greg. hands up. So yeah. let's see if we can enable him to right. talk here. So Greg, hopefully you, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hello. You? Hello. Hello. How yes. are you? Yes. Okay, okay, so, so um, this, this is Greg, Greg from, from Waukesha Hi, 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 How are Greg. you? Hello, Lou. Um, so, um, so I'm just thinking, just thinking about, about this, and I'm thinking about, about navigating, navigating different, different web pages that, that I go, I go to. to, and I'm, and I'm thinking, thinking about unfamiliar web pages. Web pages, um, the, the web pages, pages with, with maybe unlabeled, unlabeled forms, forms or. or Things, things like, like that. that. And, and I'm thinking, thinking about, about using these commands, commands for, for instance, e to find, find edit edit boxes. boxes. And, uh, uh, you, know, you know, just, just, just going, going through, through different, different things. things. And, and I, I, guess, I guess maybe, maybe I'm answering my question. question. I, 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 guess I guess if they're, if they're unlabeled, unlabeled, I just have, have to use my up and, up and down, down arrows to, to see what they are. are. For instance, I'm thinking if I was unfamiliar with Facebook. Like, like which, which I'm not, I'm not because, because I, use I use it a lot. lot. But, but like, like I, go I go into, into my Facebook, Facebook and, and Facebook, Facebook doesn't, doesn't always, always say, say it, it changes, changes right, right every, every day. day. You, know? you know, the algorithm, the algorithm seems, seems to change. To change. Um, um, but, but it, it doesn't, doesn't always say what's, what's on, on your mind. And then, and then I'll, I'll come, come up with, with an edit box, box thinking I'm searching and then you know, you know, it'll, it'll be, be what's, what's on, on your mind. mind. I, 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 guess, I guess, I guess, I guess I'm maybe, maybe answering, answering my own question. question. I, guess I guess I just have to navigate, navigate around. around. I, don't I don't know, know if you have any, any other helpful, helpful hints, hints for. Uh, let, yeah. let, okay, so let me like just that. stop you a second there, Greg. Thank you very much for your question. Um, just wanted to let the people know that telling us that we're getting a big echo in our oh. audio oh, okay. uh, from Greg. So I uh, do apologize for that. Uh, but Corey, Greg's question. Uh, what are your thoughts <laughs> on that? I love, I love trying something new. <laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest problems when we talk about web pages is accessible web pages are complex to begin with, big, long ones. And, but then when you start to incorporate inaccessibility where buttons and, and elements aren't labeled correctly or actions that you, you would expect a button to perform don't work or text, it, whatever it might be, that throws a whole nother um, you know, layer of complexity or like, you know, um, Greg was saying with Facebook, it's a yes. page that's constantly changing. Oh, God. Um, the layout, the let, text uh, that's there. Let me just stop you there, Corey, because um, Erica asked us to repeat the question. So I'm not sure because of the echo whether it's it. difficult to understand. So, yeah, the question was, what do you do in unfamiliar web pages where you may not know exactly what you're looking for, or where it is, or for pages that are a little more familiar for you, but the, the the structure changes a lot, like Facebook or the um, you think you're looking for one thing and it's not there. Or it's an un, you, you might hear a lot of times unlabeled button, unlabeled uh -huh. button, or you might get a bunch of gibberish letters. So how, what's the best way to deal with those? And again, it's just, you know, I think, Greg, you, you kind of answered your own question. Like you were saying, a lot of it's going to be in those circumstances. It's going to be a lot of up and down arrowing because you want to try to start to use the um, context clues almost like when you're reading a story 
you want to sort of start to see what's around it and you can start to say, okay, the what's on my mind at it box, I always know is right sort of sandwiched in between the add a picture and a blah, blah, blah button. Okay, well, this edit field's not labeled, but it's in the place where it sort of should be. Let me up arrow here. Let me down arrow a little bit here. And so you start to kind of investigate a little bit and, and, and to try to really help and find uh, what you're looking for. Excellent. Um, okay. We um, will not allow anyone else well, to talk nobody, until we fix that again. <laughs> nobody else is talking today, but Greg, thank you so much for, uh, for trying that out. And I'm glad that we have identified an issue. And hopefully for the next Tech Talk Live, we'll be able to correct that issue yeah. and have some more um, live callers. Let me just see if we do have any more questions in the chat here. Sure. Nancy says, uh, thank you. Uh, and can we do a presentation on Victor Trek? Nancy, um, I am definitely, or we have been floating the idea of getting a guest from Humanware on. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm now, I, I know that he and his wife just had a baby, but. Um, hopefully soon we'll be able to get him on. And uh, I also saw he was just on Jonathan Mosen's podcast. So if oh, really? Peter feels that Jonathan uh, is more important than us, yeah. oh, okay. uh, then we want to, well, we'll take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, I guess he has no excuses then. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we're attempting to get uh, Peter on and hopefully he'll be able to uh, show <laughs> us um, the Braille Note Touch. Possibly, maybe their brilliant uh, B60. Their, yeah, uh, their new line. Of, uh, yeah, of they're, brilliant. yeah, they're, they're brilliant ones as well. We'll get them through displays. the track, too. But we'll get them through the yeah. track, too. Yeah. Yeah. He knows all about that. We'll so have to book probably like three hours, though, Peter. Yeah. Yes. He, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> also, we'll probably have to pay him a, a, oh, an appearance true. fee or something. That's very true. Again, yeah. put your credit cards in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody here whose name is not displaying, so I, uh, I apologize. Okay. Uh, Svetlana, I think, uh, says thanks. It was a great presentation. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they know that, but it's a good way to summarize it. So that's, uh, that's very good news. And I think we have probably uh, pretty much finished Let's everything Let's do our, here uh, closing Let's code. our closing code. Yeah, here. and we'll talk. We can do our channel quick. OK, so closing code today is going to be, and I bet you we're not going to believe what this is. Bear. No, no, what is it? no, no, that, no. Would, that would have been good though. All right, what is it? You tell Vortex. Me. Vortex. Vortex. You want to throw it in the chat if you've got a moment? I will. And for anybody stuck in the vortex today, uh, then uh, I hope yeah. you hope you so stay just, safe. Just a reminder: they are ACVREP credits. Go to vision-forward.org/slash-tech-talk-live. Go ahead and click underneath the ACVREP resources heading. You can click and fill out your evaluation, put in your entrance and exit code. Again, the exit code today is Vortex. Put it in, pay your 10 smackers, and we will send you off a certificate. Yes, we uh, will. Your choice. And you can frame it and <laughs> put it on your wall. You should frame it, yes. very much so. Uh, also, uh, we would like to tell you about our YouTube channel, in case you're not aware, youtube.com forward slash in focus technology, you can see recordings of these sessions as well as videos that we make specifically for that channel. Um, that things like assistive technology uh, product reviews and um, lessons on uh, computer use. I was just going to say, and I think really one of the, one of the ones that could be very popular for for people is we have started a computer use series. We have a playlist specific for low vision, and we have a playlist specific for screen reader. The screen reader one will be coming out next week. Uh, Friday, uh, so that's going to be showing you how to use the basically how to use your computer uh, yeah. with magnification or with a screen reader. Yeah, from first principles. So if you're yeah. not familiar at all with your computer, or you know somebody who's not, uh, I mean, I assume you must be somewhat familiar if you're watching this show. Well, maybe but... someone put it on for you. That's true. Or you might oh, you mean you. Uh, oh, you're getting on this show? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh... But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. So do uh, visit that YouTube channel, uh, subscribe, and do the notifications and all that good stuff. And uh, the final thing is next uh, session's um, topic. Oh, yeah, what is next it? Next session's topic, which will be 2.18 uh, Thursday, as usual, 11 o'clock Central. And uh, the topic is using the Seeing AI app including the new LiDAR feature. Oh, yeah, the world. Yeah. yeah. So that should be exciting. Uh, now, for people who want to know the schedule, it is now on the Tech Talk Live uh, webpage, vision-forward.org forward slash Tech Talk Live. So you can see the schedule there. And also, when we send out uh, reminder emails, the schedule is going to be in those emails as well. So do make sure that yeah. you, uh, you check that out. Make sure you scroll past all of Zoom's info. It's below all the links for Zoom and stuff. Uh, you'll see what the topic is. Uh, although today, unfortunately, this one said February 24th. Oh, yeah, that was my mistake. You're trailing two on there, but that's okay. <laughs> 
Uh, and then uh, just a, a, a last note, Greg, you thought the music was uh, snappy. Um, we're going to go out to that same music, so we'll let it roll for a little bit. If anybody, a quick little dance party. <laughs> Please film it and send it to us. Yeah, feel, feel free. <laughs> All right, well, with that said, we will bid you adieu. And uh, thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time. Bye, all. Thanks for joining us for another Tech Talk Live. If you enjoyed Corey and Luke's antics, join us again in two weeks. To register, visit vision-forward.org slash Tech Talk Live.